Hello friends, welcome to part two of how to make $500 a month breeding red cherry shrimp. If you're new here, my name is Richard and I'm a fish and shrimp breeder based in the UK. Now if you haven't seen part one of this series, I'll put a little card up in the top corner, but I essentially covered how I go about setting up my breeding tanks and which shrimp I breed to make a decent profit. In part two, I'm going to cover feeding the shrimp, how and where I sell the shrimp, and also how I package them for postage. I hope you enjoy. So let's start by covering feeding the shrimp in my breeding tanks. Shrimp are essentially detrivores. They have evolved to eat detritus. They will eat anything. And in the wild, if our red shrimp lived in the wild, they would have a huge variety of detritus to feed on. They would no doubt feed on not only fish poop, uh, and, and vegetation that was breaking down, like they can in our aquariums. But they would also feed on dead fish, dead invertebrates, other dead shrimp. Pretty much anything that made it to the bottom of the river, the stream, the lake, whatever, the fish, the, excuse me, shrimp would consume. And that would give them a massively varied diet. They would consume all of the nutrients they needed on a daily basis, just consuming detritus. In our aquariums, we have to be careful that the detritus the shrimp have access to isn't just fish poop and breaking down plant leaves, okay? If we are breeding shrimp for profit and we want to maximize our breeding potential, we need to feed our shrimp a dedicated food that provides them all the goodness, nutrients, and vitamins they need to grow, to be able to molt, and of course, to be able to breed. Now, there are hundreds probably even thousands of different foods on the market we can feed to our shrimp. Essentially any good quality sinking fish food works well for shrimp. You can also buy dedicated shrimp food such as uh, the Shrimp King line or Hikari Shrimp Cuisine. Personally I favour Rapashi gel food. Okay Rapashi gel food comes in a powder and you mix a small quantity with boiling water, you allow it to set and then you can store it in the fridge for a few days or as I do in the freezer for a number of weeks. And Rapashi comes in maybe a dozen or more different varieties. I tend to use the community blend most often, but at the moment I'm feeding grub pie because that's all my supply I had at the time. There's much of a muchness between the, the brands, uh, excuse me, as much of a muchness between the blends. It doesn't matter which one you go for, the shrimp will still do well. So why do I favor Rapashi gel food over all the other foods on the market? Well, the great thing about Rapashi is it stays stable in the water for two or three days. So you mix up the powder with boiling water, it sets. I then cut it into small cubes. When I feed my shrimp, I place a small cube into each aquarium and the fish will then pick, um, the shrimp will then pick at that for, now typically I use small cubes. So in this case, for a few hours before it's all gone. But if that cube is larger and it sits in there for two or even three days, unlike many other foods, it remains stable. It doesn't start to break down and pollute your water. After three or four days, you would have to remove it. But if they're not consuming it within three or four days, I suspect you're putting too much in anyway. There are many other foods on the market we can feed to our shrimp. I also feed Tetra Color Crisps. I like feeding those to my fish, so they often get those. I have Hikari Algae Wafers, another decent quality food that the shrimp will enjoy. I think the most important thing to bear in mind is to feed our shrimp little and often and to feed them variety. Now I feed these shrimp in here every other day. I put a cube in on day one, I feed nothing on day two, I put another cube in on day three, I feed nothing on day four. Your individual feeding schedule will very much depend on your setup, your food and your shrimp. When I get to the point where these are holding five or six hundred shrimp each, I put two or three cubes in. When I split the colony out, which is something I'll come back to later, into just a hundred shrimp, I put less food in. It's a case of getting to know your shrimp and your tanks and adjusting your feeding regime accordingly. The key point is, it doesn't matter what you feed your shrimp, providing you're feeding them something which is of a half decent quality and you're feeding it regularly. I know there are a number of shrimp breeders who will take a flake food and crush it up and then scatter that in the water with the idea being that is good for baby shrimp. And that is something I've tried. 
Uh, personally, I find that something like the rapashi, as the shrimp are eating it, fines are coming off all the time, and those fines are found by the babies or by other shrimp in the tank. So with feeding our shrimp covered, let's look at selling our shrimp. Now, I've tried a number of different places over the years to sell shrimp, but we found eBay to be the best place. Certainly here in the UK, eBay is a massive marketplace and there are thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of buyers on there every day. But eBay offers us a number of things that something like a Facebook marketplace or um, an Aquabid doesn't. And that is I can, I can look at all of my competitors in one simple movement. All I need to do is search red cherry shrimp for sale, blue shrimp for sale, I can then see how much my competitors are charging. I can see what sort of photos they're using. I can see what they've written about their shrimp. I can often also see how they're posting their shrimp. Now I can put myself into a buyer's shoes and I can compare my listing with theirs. And I might say, well, look, we've only got three photos. They're using seven or eight. We need to up our photo game. I might see we're charging $1.50 per shrimp, they're charging $1.25. Do we want to bring our price down? Are we happy? Equally, I might see that everybody else is charging $2 a shrimp and I'm only charging $1.25. That tells me I can up my price to $1.75 and I'll still be the cheapest on, on eBay. Now, I will admit you don't necessarily want to be the cheapest man in town. You want to offer a good quality product at a good price. But often I believe people will go into eBay and they will select their product, let's say red cherry shrimp, and then they will filter by price. So if I'm charging $2 and someone else is charging $1.99, they will appear above me. So it's important that, that I shop my competitors and see how and what they're doing. Now we have a major advantage over our competitors because clearly we're breeding our shrimp. We don't have to buy them. We don't have to import them. We don't have to go to any wholesalers. Whereas my competitors may be buying a shrimp in at 50 cents, 75 cents, $1 a shrimp, they have to sell that at two plus dollars to make any money, to make a profit. By breeding my own, I could sell these at $1 per shrimp. And okay, it's not, it's not the math doesn't quite work out, but I'm essentially making $1 per shrimp. Yes, there's some electricity, there's food, it's, it doesn't quite work out of that, but, but I don't have a cost to purchase, whereas others do. So before I list my shrimp on eBay, I take the time to look at all my competitors, see what they're selling, see what, how they're priced, see what they're charging, and then I gauge from there how I wish to list my shrimp. Now, as I've said before in the, in the previous episode, it doesn't matter how good my shrimp are, I only ever call them red cherry shrimp. I will never call them fire reds, I'll never call them painted. It's only ever red cherry shrimp, and that's very deliberate. Could I get more money per shrimp if I called them fire red shrimp, if they are fire reds? And the answer is yes. But equally, you're setting up an expectation that your buyer may disagree with. And eBay, the, the possibly the downside of eBay is the potential to get negative feedback. Now, I'm fortunate. We've only had one piece of negative feedback, and that came as a result of us accidentally listing an item, whereas in fact we had just meant to set it up to, to schedule it to come on board in a few weeks time. Uh, a buyer bought it, he bought, he bought himself 10 shrimp. The minute the notification came through, we refunded his money, we canceled the sale, refunded his money, sent him an apology, and he chose to leave negative feedback. I didn't realize at the time you could leave negative feedback for a sale that's canceled. But, but such is life. I, I responded saying it was accidental, it wasn't out of pocket. We weren't scammers as he so called us, saying we were selling products we didn't have. You just have to take it on the chin. It's just one of those things. If you sell on eBay, you'll get positive feedback most of the time. You will occasionally get negative feedback. Don't let it get to you. Whatever platform you decide to use to sell your shrimp, bear in mind the more information you provide, the more likely you are to make a sale. Again, using eBay as an example, if you go now and search on eBay, red cherry shrimp, wherever you are in the world, search that. 
I guarantee there will be sellers that when you click on the description, it will just say, red cherry shrimp, 10. Or, for sale, 15 red cherry shrimp. Happy bidding. As a buyer, you look at that, you move on. What we do is we write as much information as we can. So in our description, we list how many shrimp we're selling, the fact that we bred them, the conditions we're keeping them in, what the buyer should do when they receive them. We put details about ourselves and how long we've been in the business. We, we try and essentially tell a story. We try and tell a story so the buyer knows why they should buy from us rather than from a competitor. We also put as many photos as we can. We have photos of close-ups of the shrimp. We have photos of the shrimp breeding tanks. Admittedly, not these ones. It's a glass one that we, we took the photos from. We have photos of how we package the shrimp and how the buyer can expect to receive them. And the more photos you provide, the more likely you are to make a sale. And that's true whatever platform you use. That's not just an eBay thing. Buyers like as much information as possible before they make a decision. Especially when you think it's a buyer's market. If you today want to buy some red cherry shrimp, I suspect within about 30 seconds, you can find yourself dozens and dozens of people prepared to sell you red cherry shrimp. You have to make yourself as a seller stand above the rest. And when you can't talk to somebody, you have to show them pictures, you have to write them information, and you have to explain why they should buy from you. Now, naturally, when it comes to selling anything at all, price is key. It doesn't matter how much I think these shrimp are worth, it matters what a buyer is prepared to pay for them. I would love to get $10 a piece. At $10 a piece, I'd never stop smiling. I'd be the happiest man in town. But the market won't bear a cost of $10 a piece. To, for your local market, wherever you are in the world, you need to assess what your local market is prepared to pay per shrimp, per 10 shrimp, per 100 shrimp, however you decide you wish to sell them. For us here in the UK, the price is typically between one, between one and two pounds, but let's say dollars, one or two dollars per shrimp. And that does vary. It varies by the time of year. It varies by the number of people that are selling. We tend to pitch ourselves at not necessarily the cheapest, but certainly nowhere near the most expensive. We want to sell these shrimp. We want to get them out, get the money in, <clears throat> and get the next batch being created. There is no advantage in having five, 1,000, 1,500 shrimp sitting here at $3 a piece and not selling. Nobody's winning that. I'm just, I'm just collecting shrimp at that point. Equally, I don't want to give them away. If I did 10 for a dollar, I'd never have any shrimp. They'd, they'd, they'd fly out the door. The great thing about using eBay again is you can type in your product, of blue shrimp, yellow shrimp, crystal red shrimps, whatever it is you're choosing to sell. You can see what everybody else is charging and then you can make a decision where you fit in the marketplace. The other great thing you can do is you can do some assessment before you decide which shrimp to breed. Now, as I've said, I only sell reds, yellows and blues. I will occasionally do oranges and greens, but reds, yellows and blues are our bread and butter. They sell all day long. They're hardy, they're easy to breed, they withstand shipping no problem at all, and they easily tolerate almost no matter what conditions they're plopped into at the other end, they're almost guaranteed to survive. You may wish to breed something more exciting, but you can work out from a site like eBay, if you were to breed them, how much you would get for them, and then is it worth your time and effort? There are other ways you can sell your shrimp. You could sell directly to stores. If you have a local store that's prepared to buy red cherry shrimp or, or, or yellow shrimp, whatever, from you, then that's often an easier transaction. It's often easier to take a bag of 200 on a, you know, a Wednesday morning to your local store. It's one delivery, it's one payment, it's simple. But you will get far less per shrimp than you would selling directly to the, to the end buyer because naturally the store also has to make a profit. Now, we do occasionally sell to our local store, but it's typically if we come at the end of our season, which we sell up until um, mid-November, mid, mid, mid late November, if we come to the end of our shipping season and we've got a huge batch of shrimp left, then I will take those to my local store. I do get far less per shrimp, but I don't want to be sitting on those shrimp until we start posting again in March. So there are times when I will sell to my local fish store, but generally I find selling on a site like eBay, shipping the shrimp out, has, has proved to be the best way. Now, in my experience, the other thing you need to bear in mind, again, with a site like eBay is, you can list your shrimp multiple times. 
So we typically list five shrimp, 10 shrimp, 20 shrimp, and sometimes we'll list 50 shrimp. Because some people only want five shrimp, they're new to the hobby, they want to get their feet wet, they just want to invest $10 in five shrimp. Other people may be setting up a breeding colony, they may be setting up a new tank, they know what they're doing, they want 50 red cherry shrimp to start a colony, bang, maybe it's their own breeding colony. With eBay, give them choices. List your shrimp a number of different ways, set your price right. Typically, if somebody buys 50, they'll expect to pay less per shrimp than if they buy five. But it's a case of knowing your marketplace and setting your price accordingly for each different level. We do, I say five, 10, I think it's 20 and 50. Try and cater to your buyer's needs and your buyer's expectations. Now, the final aspect I want to cover in this episode of how to make $500 a month breeding shrimp is postage. But I think the best thing I can do is to cut to footage of me showing exactly how I package up my shrimp and how I found, or the system I found to be the best, the most successful. So I'll cut to that footage. It's the easiest way to show you, I think. Okay, so I like to start the shipping process by getting everything ready. And here you can see I'm sliding this tank out. One of the reasons I love these plastic tubs so much, as opposed to glass aquariums, is when I want to cast shrimp out of this one tub, I can just slide it forward, making it much easier. The rack is pretty tight. I'd struggle to get in under the first shelf if I were using glass aquariums. And using these tubs, I can just slide it out and get a much better view. And as you can see there, I can control the air to each of my tubs individually. So I've just switched off the air stone to this one tub, making it much easier to see through the surface to catch the shrimp. Now a small beaker of water is about the perfect amount for shipping five to 10 shrimp. And here I'm just gonna choose five yellow Neocaridina shrimp, just as an example. Uh, just gonna catch out five pretty random shrimp. Now shrimp are pretty nimble, so if you find yourself having to catch some, Instead of chasing them round and round with the net, you're best to slowly approach them one at a time, maybe two if you're lucky, and then catch them out. They do have the ability to shoot off in any direction, so if you if you are heavy handed with the net, if you're chasing them round, the shrimp will be gone, they'll just dart out the way. If you're really struggling, you can place the net in front of the shrimp and then move your hand towards the shrimp and typically they will then dart into the net trying to get away from your hand. So once I've caught out all the shrimp I need for shipping, it's time to replace the lid back on the breeding tank, slide this back into place, turn the air back on before moving on with the next step. So before I box up the shrimp, put them in the, in the bag ready for sending, a little trick I've learned here is to write the customer's name on a small sticky note and then place the tub over that note before I take a picture to send to the buyer before I ship out the shrimp. Now, what I found this does is, or since I started doing this trick, I've had nobody dispute how many shrimp I sent them. I've had nobody dispute the quality and the color of the shrimp. Essentially, it, the buyer knows what they're getting on the day they're being shipped. Now, the next job is to transfer the shrimp from the catch container into the bag for transportation. I use cordon breather bags. Cordon breather bags allow for a transfer of oxygen and carbon dioxide through the walls of the bag during shipping. Now, if you were just using a regular bag, you would need to make sure you leave some air in the top of the bag to allow oxygen exchange between the air above and the water below, much as we do in our aquariums. Now, during transportation, shrimp do much better if they have something to hold on to. So here I buy these shower sponges uh, and you can rip off a small piece they're essentially netting bundled up into a, a convenient sort of scrubber i rip a small piece off and place it into the bag to give the shrimp something to hold on to during transportation now when it comes to securing the bag i have always found tying small tight knots tricky so i tend to use these zip ties so here i'll make sure the netting is all the way underwater and then carefully make sure there are no shrimp at the top of the bag squeeze out all of the air you don't want in a breather bag you don't want any air just water 
Once I've ensured all of the air has been removed from the bag and I just have water, I will place the zip tie over the neck of the bag, go all the way down to the water so it's as tight as possible and pull the zip tie tight. I'll then add a second zip tie just for safety in case the first one were to fail. I'm not aware of one ever failing in, in transit, but if it did, the second one's there. Now the reason I use zip ties is we offer a 100% live arrival guarantee. The buyer, if in the unlikely event they received the shrimp and the shrimp were dead in the bag, they just have to send us a photograph of the unopened bag and we will either reship or send their money back. By using zip ties, it's pretty much impossible to open that bag without removing the zip ties. So with the bag tightly secured, the next thing to do is prepare the box. And you'll notice here, we don't use polystyrene, we use shredded paper. And there are two reasons for that. Firstly, it's free. We get bags and bags of the stuff from a local office for free. And secondly, it's much better for the environment. Polystyrene is a terrible thing for the environment and shredded paper, certainly here in the UK, provides more than sufficient insulation for these shrimp. Now I do try and pack the paper fairly tightly so it holds the bag in place. I don't want to squash the bag, but equally, I don't want that bag moving around during transit. I want it to stay in place to keep the shrimp safe. So the, all that's left to do now is to add a detailed instruction page so the buyer knows what to do when they receive their shrimp and to tape the box up. You may notice here we use a totally paper tape. Again, it's just better for the environment. With the exception of the breather bag and the zip ties, every part of our shipping can be recycled or composted. It just feels better for the environment that way. Once I've securely taped the box, I'll add the shipping details take it down to the local post office, and that's it. We send all of our shrimp guaranteed next day delivery. So we know by 1 p.m. the following day, the shrimp will have arrived with the buyer. And that is essentially my entire shipping process from start to finish. So with feeding, selling, and posting the shrimp covered, I think that's pretty much it for this part. I think I'm going to make one more episode, which is where I explain the proper geek stuff if you get to episode three, how I move my colonies around. We made some errors in the early days whereby we would have a tank of shrimp and we would sell all those shrimp. Fabulous. And then, of course, we'd have no colony to build. And then it would be three or four months before we then had more shrimp to sell. And of course, we didn't catch on straight away. We then sold that colony. Fabulous. Six, seven, eight hundred dollars coming in. Brilliant. Then we had no shrimp to sell. Again, we had to wait for two, three, four months. So I've come up with a system that, that, that works brilliantly now, and we now constantly have a supply of shrimp to sell. So if you're not subscribed already, subscribe to the channel so you know when that episode drops. If you haven't seen episode one, I'll put a link in the description. And on screen now, I'll link to another video which shows how I would set up a basic shrimp breeding tank in case that's something you're interested in. Thanks for watching.